All right, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go, here we go, right. here we go. It's loud in the background. Loud in the background. Loud in the background, and we're live. And Are we're we? live. We're hello, live. hello, hello, hello. Hi guys, happy Wine Wednesdays. Happy Wine Wednesday. Are we going? Are we I, good? I don't know. Are we live? Uh, yeah. I think we are. Oh, there we go. There we go. Happy Wine Wednesday Hi, from Bonobo Winery. Cheers. Salud. I'm Carter Osterhaus. I'm Amy Osterhaus. Sometimes smart, Mostly they say. smart, but sometimes an Osterhaus. Yeah, it just depends on what day of the week it is, really. <laughs> um, how are you guys? Hope you're great. Uh, sorry we weren't here last week, um, but we're here back in a we big you a way. a good break. Gave you a good break, and now we're back. We're uh, better than ever. We feel like um, we have a lot of great stuff happening today because, well, first off, we'll start with, unfortunately, Sunny Anderson can't be with us today. Um, her doggy passed away and uh, it's pretty sad. And we talked this morning and she said she couldn't muster up a smile, which is so sad. Yeah, we had that it's happen really recently. sad when you lose your dog. So yeah. it's a very understandable. And very understandable. Maybe yes, we'll no. have her on in a couple. Yeah, absolutely. So maybe she will come on in a couple weeks. Uh, next week, we do have Mark, Marcus Samuelson, who will be on, um, and then uh, award-winning chef. If you've uh, never heard him in an interview, go look him up. Come back next Wednesday. He's super cool. He's super sweet, super amazing, and a fantastic chef. And well, we are actually making one of Sunny Anderson's uh, recipes yeah, tonight. from her cookbook. Yep. Heirloom tomato and pesto tart. Yum. Yes, yum, right? Perfect for a nice fall, um, rainy, cold for day. Us. For we us. We know that yes. in California and Colorado, we are with you. We're so sorry you're dealing with fires yeah. and all the bad air. And it's the opposite. It's so hot there. So yeah. we're having some climate change. A little bit different. Right. A little bit different. <laughs> and um, so because Sunny's not here, we're going to have a locals night. Yes. Uh, we're going to change it up a little bit, which is something that we've kind of, we wanted to do a lot, which is is bring some more of the local wineries together. So we have a fantastic guest tonight and somebody who's been in the in the sort of uh, Northern Michigan wine region for a very long time. Yeah, one of the pioneers here. Yeah, he really is, uh, which is Lee Lutz. And he's going to um, share uh, his knowledge. We're gonna taste some of his wines. Star Farms. Black Star Farms. If you've been there, it's a fantastic wine. It's been around. It's a staple in this area. They actually have two on Old Mission, one on Old Mission, one in Leelanau. And uh, we get to chat with him. So it's a, it's a real moment of talking wine, talking local wine, what's going to happen in the future, what has happened in the past, how this year is looking. And um, But first, we have in our kitchen, oh. our brand new chef. Brand new chef. Welcome to Bonobo, yes. everybody, Chef Adam, and here he is, <laughs> take it away, <laughs> Dr. Cornell, <laughs> Chef Adam, uh, we're so stoked to have you here, uh, you're new to the Bonobo family, yes. um, and tell us a little bit about yourself and what you're bringing to the table. Well, um, my name is Adam, Adam Raup, I'm from, I'm a Northern Michigan local, I'm from NC originally, um, I spent a lot of time traveling Colorado, Oregon, Texas, um, honing my craft, I guess, before I came home to Michigan, uh, graduate of GLCI here in Traverse City, uh, 2014. And um, I've been at Jolly Pumpkin Mission Table up in Traverse City for the past seven years. So a lot of local uh, flavor and flair, I suppose, I bring here. Um, it was a focus of Mission Table to uh, focus on our local agro business, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And tonight we're featuring uh, Nicholas Farm and Fife Eric, uh, Chris Fife Eric. He has these beautiful heirloom tomatoes. Uh, the bounty of our region really is amazing. Um, little fun fact Michigan is second only to California in biodiversity of food. So that was my fact. I was saving that. So I heard. <laughs> that's a really good fun fact. Yeah. And those tomatoes look amazing. They do. And they taste every bit as amazing as they look. So really excited to uh, bring those things to the table. Um, okay. Right. Uh, I feel like um, 
you know, it's funny because obviously Cornell is always cooking, our yes. winemaker. Yes. Oh, he's got a sad face. Can you look at this right now? I feel like there's a little bit of sadness on his face. And he's like, no, no. Okay. Uh, you know what? You guys are in good hands. <laughs> I'm not sad. I'm happy. I, uh, I think Dobby is probably the one that's a little yeah, sad being totally. off, off, off the street, but I'm so happy he's here. Um, getting us going. I think we had uh, like a couple of weekends now on the yep. LP too. And uh, yeah, and we've only heard some you know good uh, good things that has coming from you know from our customers and stuff. So great. We are super happy to have you here and yeah. like you super mentioned excited to be here. Yeah. Like you said, we've got some local stuff going on here tonight. Um, besides the um, the tart and stuff that we are doing. Uh, we also have a pasta that's also from Sunny's um, recipe mm -hmm. um, that we're going to be uh, serving out a little bit later. Um, and then also the local wines, right? Yeah. Um, we're going to have sure. Lee. We're going to have Lee uh, talk a little bit about his wines and also tasting our wines. And we're going to do the same on this side. So I'm excited to do this. Usually, we uh, all our winemakers we get together and uh, we start you know tasting wines and, uh, like blind tastings and. We add you know, positive critique, uh, if I can say that, to, to uh, you know, in doing a blind tasting, and mm -hmm. uh, and that's helped us tremendously um, in the last like 10 to 15 years. And Lee was always the one that like spearheaded that. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, it's yeah, it's just a great thing to do. So right. I'm happy to have you on too. Uh, Perfect. Um, so um, yeah, so the, the beauty of this is that it is locals night and um, the fact that we get to have Lee here and taste some of his wines, which is a little bit different, but obviously at Bonobo, you know, if you have never been here, we encourage you to stop by. If you can't stop by one of the other wineries, uh, there's a bunch of them around here. In the state of Michigan, we have like, what, like roughly, I think 140, 150 wineries. A lot of people don't really realize that. And uh, we're one of them here, and we get to. I love that we're, we have the second largest biodiversity in, in, in the country. In the country, yeah. behind California, That's which is cool. awesome. It you is. can taste it, though. I mean, the produce here is incredible. Yeah, it is pretty oh, impressive. Yeah. Um, and also back to school. So it's back to school week. So we are giving. So moms, you want some more wine? Moms, dads, <laughs> whatever. You're a full -time teacher? Yeah, dads too. Come on, like let's go. Dads like, too. Don't leave out the dads, right? Um, so parents. So if you buy six bottles, some more wine. Uh, if you buy six <laughs> bottles, you get free shipping. Just put "back to school" in all caps and uh, "back to school" or join the wine club, save twenty percent. Um, uh, just go to bonobowinery.com. Um, and now we always do uh, a dinner here, or we've started doing this dinner here, where we have uh, the twelve VIPs that come in, and of course they come by and and they get to share some fantastic food that Cornell usually makes, and now Adam. Um, and so we're going to go to, unfortunately, we're all sold out of all of these, um, these events, events. Except but September 30th, September, is it September 30th? Yeah, it's our yeah. last one. Our last one, which is September 30th, so which is our harvest, harvest dinner. dinner. And, um, that one is not sold out. So check online. It's September 30th. It's going to be our harvest dinner. It's going to be a big one. Yeah. It's going to be amazing. We're going to have such a fun time. I hope you will join us. We're all going to be celebrating as, uh. You know, hopefully Cornell's not working too hard. Right? Oh, no, we'll, we'll have some juice in the tanks. But <laughs> okay, good. Yeah. We'll have some juice in the tanks. But uh, the people that are here, I think we're going to say hello to real quick. And Todd is with them right now. Todd, are you there? Hello. Okay, what do you do on a rainy day is the question. And so as you can see, it's a little rainy outside. So we had to change everything around. And... Oh, here we are. And uh, so if you look around, oh, back again at me. Hold on. There we go. Now you can see everybody. So we're just out. Uh, you know, you can see we're uh, talking plenty of space back here, but we love having everyone here hanging out. We can do these multiple things. We can get everybody around. We can enjoy this great space, even when it's raining outside and make sure that everyone has a great experience. These VIPs sitting back here, uh, they get to laugh, have a few jokes about, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say a few comments every now and then. But um, it's one of those things where at Bonobo, just make sure we're pleasing everybody and everyone's having a good time. And we don't have to deal with the rain that's happening outside. 
Great interview. Just great. Thanks. Stellar, Thanks. stellar stuff. <laughs> really Thanks, impressed. You could say hello to some of them if you want to, but I think we're kind of running a little bit behind time. So we're going to. Oh, you do. You cut me off. <laughs> Come on. That OK, so fine. Rude. OK, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I can't believe it. You know, you give me a lead in like that, and then you just cut me off. That's what little brothers do. I can't believe this. This is ridiculous. I mean, no one's happy out here, Carter. No one is happy at all. Everyone has sad faces on here because you just did that. Who's got the best sad face? Huh? Who's got the best sad face? Oh, uh, best brother face. There we go. There we go. See? Oh, there we go. Face. OK. Well, listen, thank you so much. Um, we appreciate the people who are here. You're going to have a fantastic piece um, cooked up by uh, Cornell and Adam, which is this heirloom tomato and pesto tart. Um, we have um, uh, an amazing dish, and we're going to be pairing a lot of wines. Todd's telling jokes. In the I think Todd is telling jokes. <laughs> he is, he's always known as the loudest one in our family, and that has, has not changed. So, but um, and now it's quiet. And now it's quiet. So now let's get to uh, the moment of truth, which is truth. yeah. How much money are you going to win? <laughs> <laughs> um, do we have Lee here uh, from Black Star Farms? Is Lee on? I think Lee's on. There we go. Hey, what's going hey. on? How are you? Cheers. I'm well. Salute. 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 Thank you for being here. Happy to be a part of this. Thank you. Yeah, thank um, you. We are so happy to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we, um, you know, a lot of people obviously know who you are, you know, um, a part of the winery that you've been a part of for a very long time. I think, what was it, 98 maybe? 98, yeah. we started Black Star Farms. Yep. Wow. Yeah. So that was a long time ago. I no, mean, it wasn't that long. Carter, it wasn't on, that it was long, long ago. ago. <laughs> in my life, it was, that was a long time ago. But in 98, I'm trying to think what but I was actually doing. Wait, how time. many wineries were here when you started it, though? Well, when we started Black Star, I want to say there were something in the neighborhood of eight to 10 on both peninsulas. Um, I had started Peninsula Cellars prior to Black Star Farms, and that was in 1994. And at that point, there were, I think there were four of us on Old Mission. Uh, wow. So you've then, seen, uh, you, so you've seen some major changes yeah. within the wine industry. Seen some, and, well, some significant changes. Um, yeah. You know, the the conversion really from people who were concentrating mostly on on orchard fruits, mm -hmm. the cherries mm -hmm. and the apples, and even the pears, that kind of thing, and moving more towards uh, vineyard propagation, um, a lot more viticulture, a lot more mixed uh, uses, you know, value added agriculture, that kind of thing. So. Yeah, there's, there's definitely been some changes. Of course, there's been an awful lot more in the way of development. We always say the best home sites are also the best vineyard sites. And yep. so we're, off, we're often competing for, you know, those vineyard sites as well with the developers. But uh, yeah, I, I'm part, sure, you know, as a, um, as a, you know, a wine owner, I feel like, you know, look, there's, there's so many things that go into winemaking. I feel like a lot of people think, Clearly, if you own a winery, oh, everything's easy, everything's so set up, you guys must have it pretty easy, when that's really not the case, because there are a lot of different factors where you're, you know, you're actually growing your product, you're producing your product, and then you're selling your product, and then you're trying to make everything work, especially during COVID, which, be, was a, which is a whole nother thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what, what was the reason, you know, because clearly you've been here uh, for a good majority of when you you know, as, as, as this wine region has started to, you know, started to flourish and has started to come to the top. Um, what has kept you in the game for this long? That's a great question. I've, I've been referred to as the youngest of the old guard. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll share that. I'll share that openly, I guess. But in, in part, I think that's just because the amount of time that I've been here. But part of what I love about being a winemaker here and any of the winemakers that have been in this area for some time have had the opportunity to go elsewhere. But what it is, is the diversity that we have here and what we can do here when everything kind of comes together and just clicks. And you know, the, the one thing I will say about this year with everything that's going on, all of the COVID issues that we're dealing with, one of the great things we've got going on, at least at this point, is a great growing season. And so there's always, there's always room for optimism. There's always room for something positive. And as a winemaker, you've got to be on your toes in this region. We, as winemakers from this region, we often joke about the winemakers out on the West Coast. You know, everything's easy. The fruit's always the same. 
unfortunately, right now, what they might have to deal with is a smoke taint issue, which is you yeah, know an absolute nice. disaster and, and a pure tragedy. But um, we have to deal with cooling climates at times. We have to deal with warming uh, climates at times. We have to deal with a lot of variability. And as a winemaker, that just creates challenges that keeps you keeps you uh, on your toes. And if you're going to make your best wines, you've got to you've got to be on it all the time. Yeah, and that's, that's part of the joy. And, that's part of the and pleasure. We're we're going to taste your wines here in a second, um, which we can't wait. We're all uh, myself, Amy, Todd, and Cornell are going to taste your wines, and I think you have some of ours as well. Hopefully, I do. I do. Okay, good. So yes, we'll, we'll have a little back and forth. A little like yes. we'll open up the books and you know share notes, compare. Yes. Um, now, um, did you know that um, there were 11 wineries in the state of Michigan in 1946? Uh, I, I would have guessed that, yes, it was somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that's crazy, right? Like pretty much soon after Prohibition, um, I was reading earlier that, that Michigan was really set up to be a, a really a wine region. And, oh, yeah. um, and, yeah. and, you know, clearly we went in one direction in California. We went just, cherries. We went cherries. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, yeah. What is it like to see because you've been in the ag business for so long, because we're known as such a cherry region to see sort of the wines start to take over. Well, I think it's, it's, it says something great for what we've got going on, especially in the Northern part of the state. Um, and, and even, you know, along the whole Western shore, um, actually the Eastern shore, but the Western side of the lake, um, you know, so many people don't know Michigan in that way. And often just think of us as, you know, as Detroit and, and more of what's going on in the south of Michigan. Um, you have to make a commitment. I mean, if you were going from, you know, New York to San Francisco or New York to Chicago, you've got to make a hard right to come up into northwest Michigan and sure. spend yeah. some time and definitely get to know this area and commit a fair bit of either vacation time or, or travel time to get up here. And once those people get up here, and I think that's part of what's been such a, a fabulous part of our kind of our hidden secret is that once they get up here, they fall in love with the place and they want to keep coming back. And so much of what I know we see, and I'm sure you see, is these people that are returning, hoping that it hasn't yet blown up into some, uh, you know, some getaway for everybody and their brother. And, you know, that it still has a little bit of that hidden mystique about it, which I think, I think we're fortunate that we still have. You know, we have an awful lot of limited, we're limited in space, we're limited in growing conditions. Um, and so we're never gonna be able to get so big. So we're always gonna have that little bit of charm about what we have, especially on, you know, these two peninsulas. There's, there's, it's hard to find other places in the world that have the, the majestic feel that Old Mission and Leela and I have, truly. Yeah, yeah, and it's great to hear your passion because you can tell, you know, you can hear it in your voice and your tone and how you speak about this region, which is really fun to see because again, why we all got into this over here at Bonobo was, you know, we realized that being from a great ag region and then, you know, when I went out west personally and Todd was down south, we realized, wow, there's some really beautiful things that this yep. region has. And we wanna share it with other people. And, you know, we wanna get behind it. What is it like when you enter into like, say, random restaurant somewhere else in the US and you, you ask them if they've ever had wine from uh, Michigan? <laughs> What's that like? Well, it's funny you say that. I just, I just returned from Colorado, uh -huh. um, where in fact, I was seeing some of the fallout of the fires that are out there. Uh, when I left Colorado on Sunday, this last Sunday, it was 91 degrees. And as you know, yesterday it was almost 35. I was out there yeah. fly fishing. And I happened to be in a restaurant the day that I left. And I just casually asked the, the uh, server that was taking care of us if she'd ever had any wines from Michigan. And she just gave me that look that you often get, you know, wines from Michigan? Are you, yeah. are you serious? And I think, I think most people just have no appreciation for the you know, what the Great Lakes do for us up here. And, mm -hmm. um, and that's part of the beauty of being a winemaker from here is that you get to show things to other winemakers and to other consumers that just would have no idea. I mean, they may have heard of the Finger Lakes. Mm -hmm. They've certainly heard of other cool climate regions, but when they taste something that can be as good as the wines are from our region and they say, oh, my gosh, these wines are actually delicious. 
it's it's great to say yeah you know we're doing yeah some, it's it's some the best it really is it's so much fun when you have that opportunity i feel like i love i've told this story on here before but i i've met with numerous psalms in in la and the best part about it was when you meet with them and they get upset with themselves or they're they're when they they were actually becoming some because they never learned about this region and yep. they taste what's in the bottle and they're like wait really yeah. how did this how did we not even learn about it or know about it so for me i always feel like we have such a we don't know untapped. where yeah an untapped we don't know where our ceiling really is you know and yeah. and and i feel like there's a lot of opportunity here that we're all just sort of you know one by one you know business by business together figuring out you know where we're going yep yep well yeah. and so much you know the the whole locavore movement you know what you guys are supporting tonight with the locally grown produce and the locally grown ingredients there's, there's so many parts of the world that don't think that way yet. Mm -hmm. And we've got such an opportunity to showcase, you know, that not only the terroir of the wines from this region, but the terroir of the food that then pairs so beautifully with the terroir of the wines. Right. Um, and when you get that synergy on the palate, it's, it's sublime. I mean, there's yeah. nothing else like it. And, you know, yeah. unfortunately, Cornell did not bring me the tart that you're, oh, that you're about to enjoy. Well, you know, he's very sad about that. I, I, I think, no, maybe not. Why don't you come over here? We're going to do a couple of uh, test, uh, taste test scenes. Um, oh, sorry, you guys. Oh, you have yours. All right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've already been so having your we've, sparkling. Sparkling is magnificent. It's so yummy. Yes. Uh, I'm going to sit down right here. Okay. Um, so we're going to go through a little bit, a couple of the, um, we're going to bounce back and forth, if that's all right. Uh, we're having your sparkling wine 20, what's, what is this, 20? 2017. 2017. 2017. Blanc yep. Blanc. Blanc Blanc. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about this? Well, as, uh, as Cornell would probably share with you as well, 17 was a, uh, the most recent really great growing season for us. I mean, we had ripeness in, in all varieties at all levels. Um, as winemakers, it was a pleasure, a pure pleasure to make wine that year. We could pick early if we wanted to retain a little acidity. We could pick late if we wanted more opulence in the wines. And so this was something that came together uh, predominantly around Chardonnay, but with something in the neighborhood of 15% of uh, Pinot Gris and Pinot Blanc blended in as well. This was entourage or, or in the bottle prior to being disgorged uh, for about a year and a half. And so it's had enough time to achieve a little bit of that toasty, yeasty element that we all like in, in uh, this style of bubbly. Toasty, uh, yeasty. Toasty and yeasty, <laughs> yes indeed. I like toasty um, and yeasty, sounds a little yeasty. <laughs> well, a little, a little biscuity, you know, might be a little biscuity, biscuity. a little, okay. a, little uh, a little bready, um, but something that also, you know, in a wine like this, and this was a little bit of a challenge in 17, was to keep that razor sharp uh, acid edge. That, you know, if, if I had a plate of oysters right now, I'd be slurping those things down with this, this sparkling like, like nobody's business. Um, wines yeah. like this are so good with food. So good with food. Yeah. And it's, you know, Lee, it's, and, you know, we as winemakers will always talk about, you know, how good we can actually do when we you know, make sparkling wines in this region. You know, it's, uh, we don't deal with the long going seasons that many other regions have in the world, but, um, but this is definitely one that you can really showcase of, of you know, the beautiful food uh, flavors that we get from a great growing season um, and to put it in a bottle. Um, like with you, you have the Chardonnay Pinot Blanc and the, the Pinot Gris, I believe. Um, yeah. And uh, we also have one that is uh, kind of, I wouldn't say similar, but very Chardonnay based too, but it's a Chardonnay Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier uh, blend, which is you know, our, our rosé. And, uh, and it just fits in, you know, really perfect with the conditions that we have here, or even the summer season that we've had was, was so great. So, um, but yeah, salute to you for, for doing a great yeah. job mm -hmm. and uh, doing some nice wine out. Really, yeah. really good. Mm -hmm. Well, the, um, the other thing I'll say about our sparklers, if, 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 uh, if I've got the time, but, you know, there's, there's an awful lot of sparkling wine out there that's, that's being made right now that tends to fall on the sweet side. And, you know, again, promoting what you guys are promoting, promoting the kinds of things that we promote from the standpoint of, of these being wines that are made for the table. You know, the sweeter style bubblies, they just don't pair with food in the same way. And um, I know Cornell has this passion as well that 
we want we want a, that bright acidity and we want that there just because it offsets so much so well in so many different dishes so I think uh, it's, yeah that's, yeah absolutely i feel like that's one of the beauties about here because there are so many flavors like we've been talking about before with the ag here in michigan you have the opportunity to share with so many different flavors in the wines i mean that's the whole goal right so yep. try to make it up down in some production level hey lee we're going to um tap into the bonobo pinot green yeah um, beautiful I'm not sure if you've uh, been able to pour that or not. Um, I have. I have. I have. Right. So, so Lee, for me, as a, you know, the, the 2019 season was was a little, a little bit more challenging, and that's, and I think that's kind of the things that drives me to be, you know, wine maker here, and in this region too. It's just the, the, the challenge of the, the season that, what he puts out there for us. Um, but generally for, for us, you know, I, I like to see my Pinot Gris to be a little bit more peachy, more, a little bit of floral, um, and have some things of, you know, uh, of like tropical notes in there, uh, maybe uh, apricot and pineapple. Um, 2019 was a little bit different. So we see, the, I think, a little bit more citrus in there. And we still respect the acidity in the wine that I think is gonna fare well with what we have going on here tonight. You know, yeah, but Cornell, what I what I would say to this, um, just in addition to what you've what you've uh, laid out here, is just that Gris is such a great variety because it it has a little bit lower acidity. So even in these cooler vintages, um, there's a roundness to this wine that's that's beautiful. I mean, it it sort of dances on the palate. Um, there's enough acidity to carry it if you were if you were eating with it as well, but there's a roundness there that gives it gives it balance, and. Uh, you know, it's a it's a pure pleasure just to to drink it the way it is. It's also got a beautiful nose, I and mean, this wine is very pretty, very pretty on the aromatic profile. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I like it a lot. Hey, Lee. Yeah, so, we're we're going to zoom through these. <laughs> like we, right. we have a lot to taste, but we're probably going to um, hit this one, which is your Arturos uh, 2018 Sauvignon Blanc. Um, this is a good one. Now we try to get the 2017. But I think you guys are pretty much sold out, is that correct? We are pretty much sold out. <laughs> so, if I, so Carter, the, Carter, uh, Carter, if I understand, you ended up with a bottle of the 17, which you should taste later, because that's that's a special bottle of wine. I would okay. like to. I think pick I, somebody took it already. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lee, so with the Salt Blanc, this is a cultivar that we don't see. Uh, it's not one of our main staples here in Michigan. Um, is there a reason why you guys, you know, picked this up on? I know we have an acre of it, but I would like to, you know, get some feedback from, from you. It's like, you know, what do you think about the soft bombs growing here in, in, in Michigan? Well, so, uh, um, Cornell, you would know this, but I, I'm originally from Michigan. I moved back here in 1993 from Italy, and we had a small test block of Sauvignon Blanc at Leonor Wine Cellars, which was my first job coming back into Michigan. And it was a jungle. Sauvignon Blanc is a, is a voracious plant. It's very vegetative. And so at that time, we didn't think that we could control the, the vegetative aspect of growing it to balance out the fruit component. Um, and then we started to experiment with it a little bit at that Running Bear Farm on the other side of Center Road from our location on Old Mission. And we started to realize that in certain locations, you can get the plant to be a little bit smaller, a little bit more balanced. And so it was just a matter of figuring out how to grow the vine and making sure you had the right rootstock, of course, and then just what it took to balance out the fruit with the vegetative elements to bring it into a point where it, it created the kind of fruit that you wanted to work with to, to make these kinds of wines. We like to think that we're falling somewhere between the wines of the Loire Valley and, you know, of course, the, the big sort of flashy grapefruity things that are coming out of New Zealand. They're not that opulent. They're not that um, sort of rich in that citrus aspect. But I think we've got, again, that beautiful line of acidity, great fruit in its, in its general presence on the palate, um, and then a balance of a little bit of that herbaceous quality that's always there with Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah, yeah it's fun to see that you have Sauvignon Blanc. It's great to have that offer yeah. because it is, you know, it's not something that's expected. I think when tourists come up to Northern yeah. Michigan, yeah, yeah it's, it's really good. I think we've got a great future. 
I think we've got a great future for this variety in, in our region. That's exciting because, yeah, you don't usually see this up here. And, you know, to ship it all the way from New Zealand, you know, New Zealand and Australia. <laughs> Pretty ridiculous. We'll hold off on the rosé real quick. Okay. Uh, what I want to do, if you can bear with me real quickly, is we're going to show uh, Adam what he's putting together. And he's going to put those ingredients together and we'll come back and taste the uh, last two. All right. We want to show the, what I've done here is I made a, a, a tart and you blind bake it. So you can use uh, pre-made or make your own. I've made my own tart. And you take dry beans with a little bit of tin foil, a little bit of nonstick. And what that does is it holds the tart shell better in place. Now it shrinks up, so it's gonna pull away from the pan, but you wanna look for that nice golden brown color. And in the recipe, it suggests to pull out the beans and finish baking. I just wanted to show you the blind baking technique of this. That's a perfect pie crust shell. I'm not <laughs> sure about perfect, but it looks pretty good. It looks great. Do you bake it the entire time with the beans or just to set it? Just to set it. And then you finish off, um, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to set and then another 12 minutes additionally to get it to this nice yeah, golden color. Mm, so, so, so Adam, in that pesto, what do we got going in there? Right, so this pesto is, it's a pretty typical pesto in that it has uh, Parmesan, garlic, uh, there's basil in there, olive oil, those are your usual sp suspects, but instead of pine nuts, uh, the chef has chosen to use almonds in here, which is a nice uh, variation of it. You can use, um, depending on what, you're, what you want your fat content to be, a, a little bit fattier nut or a little less fatty um, nut. What kind so of you, almonds do you do, like blanched or roasted or raw? I did roasted. The, the, the recipe called for raw, um, slivered. Mm -hmm. And thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, but Pesto is one of those things that is pretty flexible um, and you can kind of suit your taste a little bit with it. Just a reminder to everybody, this is Sonny Anderson's um, pesto tomato tart that we, that Adam made today. So I'm just pushing the pesto out, kind of on the bottom here and patting it in. Want to get to the edges nicely so you get a good bite of pesto throughout. And then the real star of this, though the pesto is going to complement these tomatoes wonderfully, is, thank you sir, are these beautiful heirloom tomatoes. Now these are a little bit larger than what you're going to find in a typical grocery. So what I'm doing is just taking some kind of cut ends to fill out the ring a bit. Mm -hmm. And then I'll move on to some larger ones. No, Adam, we didn't put anything on the tomatoes, like, like salt or pepper or anything nope. like that. Just, just plain. pure, yeah, plain, just, yeah, straight tomatoes. Okay. And look how some big yeah, some of these are, they're huge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, a lot of the seasoning is going to come from your pesto. And I, we do put a little bit of salt over top of uh, the entire dish. Wow, yeah, so I'm just trying to fill this in well. So Connor, where are your tomatoes that you grew? So uh, my tomatoes are in my belly. <laughs> because I've eaten all of those tomatoes. We actually have a lot of tomatoes down in our garden right now, uh, yeah. which is really, we went tomato crazy this year because we knew we were going to be here Amazing. for harvest. So um, we have a lot of tomatoes, which is good. So I'm actually searching for really good tomato recipes. And this is one. Yeah, this is amazing. So, yeah, so then I just drizzled a little bit of olive oil, some salt and pepper over top. Wow, that looks beautiful. And we're cooking this at a, a nice high temperature to help roast and give a little bit of color to the tomatoes. Okay. And here I have we have one ready there. So close to the final product. Oh, right. look at that. Movie magic. Oh. Wow. Uh, now I'm gonna look for just a little bit more coloration, like you see right here. Sonny asked you to take uh, and this is a beautiful color. Don't be afraid of color. Color is just flavor. It's caramelization of foods and it really develops more flavor for you. So don't be afraid. You don't obviously you don't want to burn it, take it too far, but a little bit of color goes a long ways. Okay. 
good to hear. And we yeah. like color, right? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The rainbow. Okay. The rainbow is what we want. Um, well, that was kind of perfect because um, uh, oh I know Adam has to get that out and serve it. So why don't you come on over here? We're going to try the last couple wines that we do have, which is our rosé. Amy's stealing it from Amy, what are you doing? Oh, okay, fine. Give me your glasses. Uh, Lee, are you still with us there? Still with you. Yes, indeed. All right, good. Uh, we're going to try the uh, Bonobo Rosé. Um, okay. Sure. Uh, I think I had one start up here. Thank you. Um, so, the, uh, I, Lee, I want to get your take on the Rosé craze as your take on Bonobo's Rosé, because I feel like it's just something that has taken off in the last few years that is just, uh, it's, a, it's a beast, right? Yeah. Well, and, and you know, f um, for those of us that have been around the wines uh, in the, you know, the kind of the developing industry for a while, rosé has been kind of one of these things that's been laying dormant. It's, always, it's been there for, for longer than you'd think. Um, and unfortunately, white Zinfandel kind of had the prominent uh, place in the, in the rosé scheme of things for, for too long. Um, but part of what I love about your rosé in, in this case is that it's, it's retained again, that, that delicate balance between having red fruit on the nose and red fruit on the palate, but not being overly opulent. It still, again, kind of dances. Um, it, it stays light, it stays fresh. It's got a nice fruit profile. It's not too sharp, it's not too acidic, um, but it's, it's beautiful to sip on its own, which I think is probably the way that most people enjoy rosés. Uh, but it would also pair really well with that dish, by the way, that looked so good <laughs> coming out of that oven. Um, I'm sure it would be fabulous. Yeah, I like, you know, I, I talked to you a little bit earlier on tonight, um, you know, the beauty of this, and we've, we've talked in, on our shows and stuff, we've, we've talked about that today, probably, in, oh my gosh, more than a handful yeah. of times. <laughs> right, and, uh, and it's just a combination of, you know, of a lot of uh, cultivars that we have in there, it's eight cultivars, so we've got eight different flavor profiles going in there. Um, and I think we ended up, you know, with a very, very nice, uh, very nice rosé uh, that I feel too that is, that is really well balanced and uh, complements the area, um, you know, for, for what we grow here. Yeah. Unfortunately, sometimes you see rosés that can be a little heavy or a little weighty on the palate. And they're just, they're, you know, it's, it's a summertime wine. Our, our okay. rosé sales drop off considerably after the, you know, the temperatures start to drop. And if they're too weighty, they just don't, they don't work well during that warmer weather. So I think this is, you know, this is something that you're going to sell out of faster than you, uh, you might imagine. I know there is something yeah. amazing, like very romantic about rosé. And yeah. it feels very summer, but there's like, it, it, the idea of it has such a feeling to it, you know. Like, you're like, oh, it's warm out. I'm going to have a rosé. Well, speaking yeah. of romance, um, these two are celebrating their anniversary. Hey. All right. All right. All right. Happy, Happy anniversary. We got a lot of rosé <laughs> now. Now I know what you were thinking. This is perfect. <laughs> but I was thinking the same thing. Like, I don't really, my rosé is not my go to, you know, come December or February. Maybe February because it's Valentine's Day. But but you know, it's like not really, it's very much a summer feeling, summer drinking kind of wine. It is, it is. Well, and because you guys are you you guys are so culinary focused, the other thing where a rosé can work really well is that transition between white wine and red wine. You know, you right. did it perfectly in this tasting flight in that as we're going from some nice white wines into a final red wine or two, it's, it works well just to kind of move the palate and shift the palate a little bit away from those white, floral, you know, lighter fruit profiles into something that's a little bit darker and, and uh, richer in the way of a red wine, so. Well, I'm very excited to taste the uh, Cab Franc. Uh, thank you so much for um, sharing this with us. Yeah, so this is the 2000, uh, 2017 uh, Cab Franc, which uh, is something that, you know, if you're uh, unfamiliar with Northern Michigan, I feel like this is it. this is more of like one of the nerdier wines. This is one of the wines that you know most people think of like 
obviously the cab sub is not something that you know they, they generalize with it and this is something that's going to be a little bit different um this is definitely something that uh we unfortunately at Bonobo don't have any um oh, yeah. Yeah. oh we're gonna have some no this year yeah we're gonna have some this year we don't have from last year's good yeah from last year's minutes so we're very excited very excited to try this because i think it's been a little bit of a minute since i've yeah tried well I and I know Cornell would tell you the same thing. He and I are both passionate about Pinot Noir and we, we make some beautiful Pinot Noirs in our region. But Cabernet Franc is, is you know, it's, it's a step sideways from Pinot in that it, it carries a little bit more body, a little bit more weight on the palate. Um, it's got a little bit of that herbaceous, you know, sort of earthy rusticity that you see in, in wines primarily from Europe. You know, it doesn't have the opulence of the West Coast Reds um, but again, a wine that pairs so well with food, you know, you can easily drink this with a steak. You can easily drink this with pork, you know, with a, a stew of sorts, you know, that might be coming into, into fashion right now with the fall cooler seasons. Um, it's got a lot of versatility, a lot of versatility. Yeah. That's right. You know, that's a great, uh, you know, with Cat Trunks, a great cool one that, uh, Great coffee bottles as, as well, and uh, I like the way that you guys took care of the, you know, the herbaceousness that we could some sometimes see here in in, uh, in in northern Michigan with having a cooler climate and stuff like that, and dealing with different growing uh, conditions and manipulations of, of the vine. So um, yeah, I thought you guys did a yeah, good job. Very good. Yeah, Cap yeah, Rock is. Um, yeah, I know it's gonna be fun to get this one back when we do because it's something that's yeah. fun. It's like I said, it's like. This is, I feel like, a good representation of the area. Um, there's a lot going on in this glass. And, um, you know, when you taste it, you can really sort of, from the first to the third taste, you, you kind of can start noticing different notes um, as you're sipping on it. And um, it's just one of those ones that, quite frankly, a lot of people I don't think generally have. No. And in northern Michigan, you know, that is something that I think we're all very proud of. Well, and unfortunately, in in warmer climates, it tends to get it tends to get a little overblown or sort of blown out. Um, you know, the 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 subtle nuances of the grape they they become sort of flabby and and I don't know a little gushy. Um, I had a I had a West Coast Cab Franc I don't know two or three weeks ago, and it was something that I I drank about a half a glass of, and then I didn't want to have any more. It was just it was it wasn't interesting. It didn't keep me, you know, enticed. It was uh, sort of over the top, and I think that's where we retain balance that is easy to keep on the table, you know, throughout the course of a of a meal. And Cornell will tell you the same thing here. It's a fabulous blending variety. I mean, it blends really well with a multitude of things. Uh, you know, the, the Bordelais have been doing that obviously for hundreds and hundreds of years, but um, if you're growing Merlot, if you're growing Tiraldigo, if you're even growing, you know, other reds that you want to want to give a little bit more oomph to, Cabernet Franc is definitely that, that variety that can do it. So. Yeah, this is delicious. We actually have people stealing it in the back right now. <laughs> yeah, so. they're like, <laughs> give me some, give me some. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, well, listen, Lee, thank you so much. Um, we really appreciate your time, um, your, your passion for what you're doing within the region, um, and um, the way that you're, you know, such a, you know, a megaphone for this area and what you guys are doing at Black Star. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, we, you know, hope to work uh, together with you guys again in the future, and, and obviously, um, we cheers to a fantastic uh, season. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, up. indeed. If, if we don't uh, see each other again prior, have a great harvest. Anybody who's interested in our wines, blackstarfarms.com is the easiest way to find them. Free shipping also on six bottles or more. So thank you for the, for the uh, camaraderie here and the, the joint interest in supporting and promoting our region. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's Absolutely. great talking with you, Lee. It's really great to hear your perspective because you know everyone sort of lives a little bit in their bubble in these different wineries. So it's great to sort of hear your perspective too. Thank you. And Lee, if you're, if you're open well. to it, we've actually gotten a question from someone specifically for you, if you're, okay. you've got a minute. Most definitely. Um, so Sally, who is one of our regulars and joins us every week, almost every week, I'm sure, um, 
Cornell has talked about this before, but would love your, your sort of feedback here. Um, what are your thoughts on the cooler climate in Michigan and how that sort of helps grapes like Cab Franc versus when that grows in some warmer climates like, you know, California? What sort of are the, the advantages that we have up here when it comes to Cabernet Franc? Well, Cabernet Franc is, is often, and I kind of touched on this in my last comment, it's one of these varieties that can retain really sort of delicate, pretty fruit aspects in its profile, which can become excessive or what I refer to as sort of flabby or, or overblown if it's in too warm of a climate. So, you know, in, in our region, we retain sort of the, the ripe black Current and blackberry aspect of the of the variety, rather than becoming too dark and too meaty. Um, some of the some of the Cab Francs that I've tasted from the West Coast often are Cab Sauvignon wannabes, and I think what we retain is that again that pretty sort of fruit of the woods um, profile that I think is just it's so much more interesting and so much more versatile at the table. Awesome, thank you. Well put, well put. All right, Lee, Black Star, Black Star, you, Winery, Black Star Winery, thank you so much. We appreciate thank you. you. Uh, cheers. cheers to a great harvest. All right, as well. Take care. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so that was Lee Lewis, Black Star Farms, uh, Black Star Winery here in Northern Michigan. Uh, check it out if you ever come up. Please stop at Bonobo too. Stop out there. Well. They They're have so a place good. on Old Mission and Lee Lewis as well. Um, and I now served this delicious Amy gets to try tart. the tart because Yum. we only have one uh, for all of us. So, so Carter, you and I are allowed to share this because <laughs> we swap rooms. But besides that, <laughs> mm. oh my god, ours is in the oven. So we'll, we'll oh, get to try it. So <gasps> People are going to be so excited to eat this. This is <laughs> so yummy. Wow, Carter, do you want to bite? Well, you're always preaching of these. Um, what you know? Yeah non-meaty dishes, right? Yeah. And here you go. Oh, that's so good. Oh, Let man. Let me out of it. <laughs> this is really oh, wow. good. There's that like is... a slight lemon zest in it that's like kicking off all these flavors. Oh my gosh, that is terrific. There, um, yeah. so the beauty of this dish, I love that it's, it, it is Sunny's dish and that we're cooking it. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here. Mm. But Sunny, mm. if you're watching right now, this is a fantastic this dish. Is so good. If you don't want to mm. have, so you want to have something filling, um, still it's a little bit of a pastry in it. Right, and especially somewhere like here in Northern Michigan where you can get all these ingredients locally. Go. I'm gonna have one more bite. The almonds in it are delicious. They're really meaty. Mm -hmm. well, they make it feel a little bit Oh my gosh, that is really meaty, tasty. more substantial. And the tomatoes are sweet and there's like, some little lemon zest. I have not read the whole recipe yet, but Ooh, that, that is really good. Heart crust. Todd, are you good? Hopefully I get some a little bit, but obviously Sorry, these guys are hogging I'll it. I'll give you a bite. But um, once again, little, little brother and his bride are taking over the whole show, but go ahead. Uh, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. Well, and if people want to try Chef Adam, even though it's Sunny's recipe, Chef Adam is the one that cooked it, made the dough from yeah. scratch. You can come try Chef Adam's food Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays at Bonobo. Yeah, believe it or not, you know, we joke about Cornell always being here to cook for you, but Adam is cooking for you. Yeah. So yeah. come in and see us, and he'll take care of you. Um, thank you guys for joining, for joining us. We appreciate you. Um, and again, Marcus Samuelson will be here next week. And then we have another week where we have another special guest. We will bring Sunny back onto the show as well uh, when she finds some time. Uh, have a wonderful rest of your week. Yeah. Take care. And hopefully we'll see you here at Bonobo Winery sometime soon. Peace. Bye. Cheers. Cheers.